it's so funny, it was piss and rain before, and now it's all sort of fluffy clouds and, and on and off sunlight. Ooh, what do we have over here? It was uh, pissing down very heavily for the first half of today and the roads are now completely waterlogged. Some of them are underwater. Um, so that kind of ruined that. I'm a fair weather photographer, I don't mind admitting that. There is an area about half an hour north of my house that I've been to many times but I haven't been to in quite a while. Normally it seems to have wheat fields in it and I've taken some shots that I'm very happy with. I want to try using my new RF 100 to 500. It's probably about the least popular focal range of landscape photographers. We'll put it this way, super zooms are probably the least popular lens choice for landscape photographers. Typically your average landscape photographer you know goes and grabs a wide lens. They like to get the wide vistas. I tend to look at photographing wide vistas for me personally as kind of documenting what I see or what the average person would see. Now there, of course there are myriad exceptions to that but when I look at a grand scene and then I photograph it with a wide lens to me at least it seems like I'm kind of just documenting what I see. Whereas if I shoot with a very long lens, like the 100 to 500, then I'm plucking out elements of a scene that typically you don't see with human eye, at least not easily. Or if you do, they're very small, you know, and very far away. Bloody hell, it's like a river down here. Whew. That's it, can't see shit. Another roadblock, wonder what this one's for. The weather sure has been shite, but as you can see now, it's beautiful and blue, although over on the other side, over there, it's super grey. This is kind of typical weather in Victoria, Australia. You can have a couple of different seasons literally happening at the same time. You can have turbulent winter over on your west, and over on the east, or up to the northeast, you can have beautiful spring sunshine. Got some beautiful light <coughs> just hitting the distant hills. After doing that video recently on shooting handheld, I find the whole idea of shooting handheld kind of appealing. I was just watching a Thomas Heaton video this morning about um, how he is a tripod shooter because he likes how it slows him down, makes him more deliberate, gets a more precise composition and all that. And I'm very much like that too. But when I think about it, some of the best shots that I've ever taken have actually been those opportunistic shots where I've just seen light hitting a hill a certain way. I've slammed on the brakes in the car, jumped out with my um, 100 to 400 in the past, or now a lot it's gonna be with this 100 to 500, just to grab something that I see that you know only lasts seconds. So I'm kind of split either way, I like both. If the lighting conditions are stable, then uh, I like to shoot with a tripod because I do like that aspect of slowing down and just doing things more deliberately. But when the light is like this and you've got patchy cloud all around and you can see all the cloud behind me, there are gaps in between all those bits of cloud. And when the sun hits, you know, a hill or uh, some kind of shape in an interesting way that I want to be able to grab it quickly and a tripod's just not going to cut it. So especially with something like this, where precise framing uh, is something that you know, is fiddly with a tripod, whereas if you just move around with your hand like this, you can quickly frame up a shot, fire off a couple of shots. It's a lot more appealing to do it handheld. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just waiting for uh, these distant hills that I've shot a number of times to get bathed in light, but you know, only partially lit, because that's the kind of shot that I love. It's just a shame it's so overgrown here. You can see how overgrown it is here, and that's kind of obstructing my view of the hills in the distance. It might be that I have to get the drone up, but then that's an entirely different kind of shot. And I really want to see what kind of shots I can get today with this. One thing I've noticed too is I get older is I need glasses to do a lot of things. Uh, but then because I've got blue eyes, I've also got really sensitive eyes to light. So I need sunglasses a lot of the time too. 
and I'm constantly switching between sunglasses and glasses. Where's my glasses? I don't have, oh, what do we got here? Okay, glasses on my head, but I often need sunglasses too. Like right now, this is killing me, but then it makes it hard to look through the viewfinder of the camera. So, the perils of old age. Come on, light. I see you hitting the foreground. Show me what you can do with the background. Mind you, with this foreground lit up, it's actually kind of cool. Uh huh. Uh, you know, you get some of the best shooting in windy conditions like this, but you know, the light just changes so fast. I mean, that's what makes it appealing is uh, the movement of light across hills and other objects, but you gotta be quick. <laughs> you definitely gotta be quick. And this is why it's also great to shoot raw because if you're shooting raw and your exposure's off, at least you can adjust it easier, you know, in post. You can adjust it easier in post. So what do I think of the RF 100 to 500? Well, as expected, it's brilliant. Shooting directly into sunlight, there is no flare. Uh, everything is pin sharp. It's quite heavy compared to the RF 100 to 400, which is one of the things I loved about that lens, but this does have a tripod mount uh, on the lens barrel. So that certainly helps when it comes to shooting on a tripod and also for hand holding it, it uh, gives you a bit more purchase on the lens, but it's absolutely brilliant. And for landscape photography, you can help turn an otherwise mundane scene into something truly magical. I highly recommend it.